it's okay, we'll go ahead and talk about the the paving and the and um and just keep right on rolling because you know someone may decide to chime in and we're happy to have them. Okay, so did uh, did Jim have anything to say about the uh, library? Not really. No. Okay, good. Just no demo to be out there. <laughs> yeah, no, thank, thank you. Thank <laughs> you for the opportunity, them. though. <laughs> you know, you need to make your pitch, Jim, that all the select board needs to buy their T-shirts to support the library. <laughs> for sure. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Okay, Ron, what's up with the paving right now? So we have uh, two, two contracts is a good way to look at it. The first contract is a amendment with Jay Hutchins to take care of some village street paving. And the second contract is a brand new one to get some quotes on Center Road and, and uh, the loop at Sterling View. So that's... Okay. We're gonna. I can go down. Uh, go down the list for everybody that wants to hear it. Uh, the overall budget is a really ballpark guess of five hundred thousand. Uh, Two hundred forty-five thousand is in the highway budget. The village of Hyde Park is paying, uh, con contributing eighty-seven thousand, um, and we also have a pending state grant for one hundred and seventy-five thousand. So those are the. That's the plan anyway. The bids are. I have no I have no idea what's going to happen to the new bids. The last year's bid, which Hutchins has agreed to keep, is sixty eight dollars seventy five cents a ton. Uh, we had to pull one of their roads out, uh, which is the Fitch Hill Road, and part of the contract amendment with them is that one road because there's more paperwork tied to that that they have to produce for the grants related to the water project because the village is paying the paving costs through their water project, which comes with a whole bunch of strings. And Hutchins said that it's, it's enough work where he couldn't hold the 6875. So he's gonna submit a new number um, and Brian and, and Mark and I will look at it um, in, the, in the short term here. The you work know under the, you know when he's gonna have that, that new figure? Uh, yeah, I think he's got, he's got to, he wanted to see the whole list from the board. So I think we're going to, after tonight's meeting, we'll send that document to him, which includes Fitch Hill. I'll just go, I'll walk through it already. This is the contract <laughs> amendment. Uh, Fitch Hill Road, it's the whole road. Um, and hold on, Mark just texted. Let me hold on one second. Uh, all right, so the first one is Fitch Hill Road, which is the grant and bonding conditions. And then there's four other road sections, Hillside Lane, uh, which is at the bottom of Fitch Hill, a little side street with two, I think two houses, maybe a third. Uh, Centerville Road from Route 15 to East Main Street, Eden Street from Route 15 to East Main Street and Prospect Street, which is pending your negotiations, discussions with the neighbors. Uh, so we'll do same price, 68.75 for those four, and Fitch Hill will get a new price per ton uh, when they see the whole thing bundled together. Then, they're, then they'll have to be back for a contract approval to you uh, probably on March 15th with that number in there. But I'll work with Brian and Mark between now and then to tight, tighten all that up. I just want to make sure that that list is something the board wanted to move forward on. If you want to take out one or more of those roads, it's kind of the time to do it. Uh, you may have to, depending on cost anyway, but right now I, I'm hoping we can get it all done. So that is the first one. That's the contract amendment. The second one is the new bid, which we do every year anyway, but this is... Um, Primarily deferred last year to, to cost and no state grants were awarded last year. This year, they're planning on awarding grants. Uh, we may not know till uh, May, though. So it's it may be a late May, June type period. So it's we're going to ask for the 175,000. Uh, Center Road from Morris 
downtown line to McKinstry Hill Road. It's about 17,000 linear feet. Uh, Cleveland Corners Road, east of Center Road, that's the hill where the pavement ends at the top of the hill. Uh, Cleveland Corner Road West, which is from Center Road uh, to just past the first driveway on the right, I think it's 150 feet. And that's a drainage turning movement problem. That curve, inside curve gets killed all the time from cars coming off center road. So we're gonna build that up a little bit and get it a little longer. Um, and then, and Mark, Mark wanted to get past that first driveway because it's a drainage issue right on that inside corner. So if we can pave it just past that first driveway, the drainage issue will stop. And then the last one is Sterling View Loop, which is, um, there's a, if you go all the way to Sterling View, just before you get to the loop, there's a sharp left turn. Yeah. And from just past that left turn to the loop uh, would be reclaimed. A, a highway may have some preliminary work to get in there, some drainage issues. I, we'll have to look at that a little bit uh, before we actually get the, uh, maybe when the pavement's taken up during reclaim, we can go look at that a little bit closer and see if there's any more work that we can do to push the push the drainage. So those are the four on the bid, the new bid. The new bid. Uh, it's a lot of paving, but I think it's, Center Road is ready. I don't know how the patch pays have been holding up, Dave, on Center Road, have you been yeah. bumping up? <laughs> Snow covered, smooth, smooth right now. <laughs> we don't have a bare roads policy. <laughs> Hey, hey, Ron, let me ask you something about the Sterling Park here. With this new, as I understand it, the, uh, they're forming an association. Yeah. Will, will I have anything to do with uh, the town road? No, the town road is a separate strip of road that has nothing to do with association. We have to maintain that like all of the class three roads. So, so we don't have, excuse me. So we don't have to go up and worry about uh, uh, right of ways and deeds and stuff like that. No, no, no. We had, that road was accepted uh, all the way to that sharp left turn that I was talking about uh, mm -hmm. originally with the whole project. So we have a deep. He's rolling. Path. Roland's live. He's rolling. Uh, Yay, he's rolling. <laughs> it's finally happened. All right. Uh, last last year, you accept that you laid out a new road, and we had a survey done for the loop. So we're, we're all done with that. Well, it would be. So that's. Go ahead. I was going to say, you know, the um, the the state, but it's COVID money, so I don't know if they're going to figure out how to get any of this surplus money that's coming into the state to roads. It certainly would be nice if the town grants got up some and some of it could be used that way. Yeah, no, no. they haven't told us what strings are got to be attached, so. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So the, the motion, I don't even know if it's a motion as much as is the board uh, okay with those projects moving forward to contract amendment with Hutchins and then a new bid on Center Road in Sterling. If you are, then we'll we'll have bids can go up pretty quickly on the Center Road and you'll have those for March 15. The contract negotiation amendment process with Hutchins should go pretty well. We should have a final contract amendment on the 15th of March as well. So you you, you think it'll be starting the Center Road in May? Uh that's going to be a tough call because I don't know if we'll have our grant awards by then. So yeah, if we get the funding and all the bids come in the way they're supposed to, uh, we could, we'll probably pave through July 1st. We're, we're, all the money I've been talking about really is a July 1 year. Mm -hmm. If you front load it, try to get some work done in May, we'll have to look at the budget, how much money is needed for June 30. But I've been talking about it's a July 1 funding plan if you will yeah. we know the contractors will want to do it quicker <laughs> so we might mark and i can look at the current highway project and um uh, highway budget and see if there's anything left from last year to get them started earlier 
Well, so what, what's going to happen up there through there to Cleveland's corners? You're going to you're going to reclaim that, or what's the hill you're talking about? Yes, uh, from the intersection yeah. up to the top. Uh, Cleveland Corner Road East. That's what we're calling it. Yeah. Uh, 1,175 feet long, full depth reclaim, leaving asphalt in place, compact it, add chloride, cave with two inches base and two inches top. Because if you don't do something that you don't reclaim that, it's a mess up through there. No, but you're you're good with reclaiming that. So that's what, that's, that's what's in the current. Okay. <laughs> okay. So, Brian, Dave, Rolly, and Rogers, does that sound like a reasonable plan? Yeah. Yeah. That was for me. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Hmm. Okay. What else? What else we got, Ron? Anybody showed up yet? Oh, just yeah. Mark was at a was out, and he just got back. He was just anybody have any questions for me? So he's. <laughs> if you have any questions for Mark French, we can get him on the line. But overall, I think uh, during the town meeting, you would generally, um, you've told people that you're trying to get this paving line up every year. So we got twenty thousand more, sort of incrementally up to the two hundred and forty-five thousand now. Uh, I think it was sixty thousand when I first started working. It's about seventy thousand a mile or something. So it's it's really it's helpful to have the money in there because it allows you to leverage grants to get you know sort of do the catch up. We do need somebody to look at the paving plan and budget to know where we should be. You know, is it two hundred eighty thousand a year? Is it two hundred fifty? Is it three hundred? So I'd like to be able to pin that down a little bit better. Um, you know, asking for twenty thousand. A year is pretty good. It's not. It doesn't push us over that two or three percent that you talk about for the annual budget increase. Um, but I don't, I don't want to keep asking if we if we can manage it to stop asking and keep it at a certain you know inflation rate or something. So just something to keep in your back of your something to keep back of your head that you know when we pick up the budget in October, which is a handful of months away, we want to. <laughs> We want to look at paving a little bit. <laughs> yeah, well, and see if sort of between now and then, if we get a get a better idea too. I, hmm. Yeah, I just so I, we, we we are so far behind that I want to make sure that we know what the end is of trying to catch up. Yeah, and how long it takes to catch up, right? Right. So that's it on paving. We'll we'll see again on the fifteenth with hopefully a contract amendment and a bid recommendation. Okay. Um, what else we got? I think we have when we get through with everything else, we have some union stuff that we need to talk about, but that'll be executive session. Um, pretty quiet crew tonight. Dave, anything else we're forgetting? Rolly, anything we're forgetting? Roger? Oh, I don't think so. Not on my part. I don't. Yep. Rolly, you and I are meeting with Brad tomorrow night at six at the fire department, right? Right. Okay. We received a letter of resignation from uh, uh, Mr. Webster. I did it in an email, yes. Um, I can't, uh, 
we uh, it's it's going to be interesting and and of course Rolly, this is part of you know we'll we'll talk with uh, with Brad about but um I have I and I think well, I sort of have to keep an eye on is the fast squad because of course it's been so difficult to get you know to get folks to join and I was I was talking with uh, with uh, George Cook the other day. And um, he said he and Dottie aren't youngsters, and of course, through through COVID, um, you know, there've been some calls they just they're just not going out on, and they've been pulling back slowly but surely. And you know, if you remove the cooks from the fast squad, you don't have much of a fast squad, and it's and it's being very hard uh, to um, uh, you know to, to to get folks. I think. It, it's just like the fire department volunteer things like that are very, you know, are very difficult. So I, in, in future thinking, we may, we may end up without a fast squad. I guess I think that's one of those things we're just going to have to keep an eye on. So, so I, I would entertain the idea when you're talking to Brad, seeing, seeing Brad hits, they hit about 50% of the calls and Brad hits 90% yeah. of the 50% of the calls is right. It, it is pulling the fast squad back into the fire department. Yeah, I, th I think it's, it's uh, yeah, yeah, I guess that's, you know, Roly and I, we can, we can talk about that, but I think part of it just comes down to, you know, do you have enough volunteers so that it really makes sense? You know, a, a one person fast squad, I'm not quite sure that that's, I, I just, I don't know, I, you know. I mean, the ambulance, police usually go to the scene anyway if there's something going on 99% of the time if they can, but um, the ambulance, they're, they're right on the spot. I mean, they're they're pretty fast. Yeah, yeah. With, with if, if we didn't have a fast squad, just, you know, it's that uh, they can, depending literally on where you're located, you know, somebody might get there faster than the ambulance can, but, you know, if you're up in the other part of town, the ambulance probably won't get there at the same, you know, before. So I just, I, I just, thinking about the things that we need to think about, I think that's going to, that's going to be one of them in my, again, my conversation with George Cook, sort of. <clears throat> but the, uh, to, to answer Roly, to answer Roly's uh, statement, don't count on the well. County Sheriff's Department. They are not EMTs. They're not trained to EMTs. That's right. right. I agree with that. But they do go to a lot of the calls. I, I've well, they, seen. Go, they, they go to a call, but they can't do nothing. But then don't forget if we got the moils busy or whatever, we got neutral aid to it. That's what neutral aid's for. Yeah. yeah. You, you, you know, when seconds counts, the ambulance is only minutes away. Yeah, I, yeah. I, I, I'd, I'd say Memorial's doing a fine job. I mean, yeah, yeah, oh, well, I, then, I, be, yeah, yeah. No, I think uh, it'll be. Um, but they're always looking for members on the fast squad, Dave. Yeah, yeah. So, so anyway, that's just obviously one of one of the main you things. Ever see, you ever seen me gut a deer? <laughs> I never seen you. So, is that why we don't want you on the fast squad? That's right. <laughs> During the day or night? <laughs> you say, day. Ooh, I, I, I get queasy. <laughs> but, but but if we brought that fast squad, seeing Brad is the only one that ever, I shouldn't say the only one ever, most of the time is the one that sure, responds. Yeah. When he's not on NEMS, but he's going to respond anyways, uh, if you look at his budget and look at the radios and the uh, IUDs, whatever you call the things, and, and the, the money we can save in that budget, and, and maybe put it back into the fire department. I think it, it would be a, a better investment than what we got now. We got a great minds are traveling along the same track, Dave. Yeah, <laughs> you know, oh, again, it's just because it's it, it's so difficult to get people, and and. Um, you know, Brad kind of becomes our one-person fast squad. Well, he's going to be the fire chief too, but then I don't know how 
you know, what kind of conflict that presents or how difficult that is. But again, I get, and we, we don't have to make any big decisions right away. We're just sort of on the list of things to think about. Right. Yeah. Um, what else, Ron? We got a one item on the agenda, which was the uh, 457 retirement plan. We need a vote oh, yeah. on that. Right. So the, the town has been a member of the state 457 retirement plan program since 2008. Uh, we had one employee back then that signed up, I think. Then they left, and it, it because we didn't have members, it didn't affect the eligibility. But nobody else has signed up, so the new employee had asked about that because it's on our lit literature, and we found out that some agreements and motions had to be updated because it's been so long. So uh, there's no cost to the town except for Allison's. Uh, giving the new new hire another piece of paper to give them a handout from the retirement program, which is run by a third party Prudential Retirement Insurance and Annuity Company. Uh, all town towns are eligible to offer it. Uh, I don't I don't know of any towns that would match a contribution or anything like that because we're already part of Beamers, which requires all town employees to join at 24 hours or more a week. So that's a mandatory retirement. Now, uh, this program, since it's optional and by the employee's own deductions, you could say uh, in your motion, which I'll go over in a second, um, to offer it to all regular employees, regular employee being regardless of hours, as long as they get a, a weekly check. So we got about 12 to 14 people that, I think it's 12. I get a regular check, so it wouldn't matter if they work, you know, 10 hours or 15 hours or 40 hours or more. It's just anybody that gets a regular paycheck. Uh, but you have to set that. That's one of the decisions. The other decision you have to make is uh, who is the client authorized representative, which would be the uh, finance director, Allison, and then alternate people that could talk to Prudential. So there's a short list of people that maybe I want to talk to a credential, but I don't want to make an employee change. So the town administrator and town treasurer could be on the list as authorized to speak to credential, but not to make employee changes. We should, probably should only have one person making, you know, changes for employees just for consistency. And then having the two people alternate basically uh, we would have to change the paperwork with Prudential if Allison left or her job duties changed. But I think it's good to have one person as a as the client authorized rep, and then have a couple people back up that could still talk to them. If you're not on the list, you can't even talk to Prudential. So um, the motion that would do it all is to. And I'll, I'll read it slowly. It's a little long. Motion. To approve the 457 plan participation agreement and authorize Allison Kusan to be the town's client authorized representative to sign and process related documents with Prudential Retirement Insurance and Annuity Company and to have all regular town employees eligible to participate. Okay, anybody got any questions? Yeah, I'm still a little confused. That, that That's not a town match or anything wrong? No, it, it could be if you want to do that, but it's it's not required. It's all 100% employee. So can I have a, uh, have a motion? So we'll move what uh, Ron had uh, just read. Okay, in a second. Second. Okay. Any more questions? Any more clarifications? No. Um, okay, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Anybody abstaining? Okay.
that was it for that agenda. Okay, shall we? Um, go ahead. Jim, still want to jump in? You got a big change. No, no, thank you. <laughs> thank you very much. Thanks for coming. We'll, um, we'll see you next week. <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> bye bye. Have a good evening, Jim. You bet. Thanks, everybody. Bye. Bye. Have a good bye. Okay. <laughs> bye, Jim. Savannah's there. Okay, I'm going to take a second to um, transition here, too. Did you have a, you had a vote on executive? I was typing. Oh, sorry. I need a move to go into executive session. So moved. A second. Okay, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Anybody abstaining? Okay. We're set, and I guess all we need to... Um, let's see, do we, do we want to... Do we want... Oh, I don't want to do that. <laughs> it's not anything important. Don't worry about it um okay so i guess it just we need a motion to adjourn so moved thank you okay all in favor signify by saying aye. aye 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 anybody opposed anybody abstaining okay we got it okay good job everyone. all set yep we, thank are, you. we are all set see you tomorrow roland you did it roland thumbs up yeah, for you buddy yay! <laughs> Take care, Roger. Campaign yep. hard.